Good afternoon and welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Uh, we are so glad that you've joined us this afternoon to learn about six fantastic schools. Uh, as this is a webinar, you as an attendee cannot be seen or heard, um, but our panelists, you'll be able to see and hear them for sure. If you have questions for any of these schools, please feel free to type those in the Q&A at any point during the presentation. Um, there will also be an opportunity at the end to ask questions as well. There is another set of sessions right after this one today, so you can certainly sign up for those. Or if you'd like to join us in April, we will be hosting another college fair just like this one um, a little later in the year. And then too, if you want to go back and review anything that you saw here today or certainly catch a session that perhaps you did not register for, there are recordings available at the website at which you registered. So you can see and hear whatever you need to about schools that most interest you. This is a six by six setup, which means that each of our six institutions will have six minutes to present. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to Katie from the University of Dallas. Good afternoon, everybody, and it's fantastic to be here. Uh, my name is Katie McKenzie, and I am an admission counselor at the University of Dallas. Um, <clears throat> Uh, today, I don't have any screens to share with you because, as you all know, Dallas is um, experiencing some crazy weather down here. So because of that, uh, and um, I want to make sure that everything stays technologically sound, I'm just going to explain the University of Dallas and um, things like that, and just you guys are just going to see me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, so the University of Dallas, we're a small liberal arts Catholic institution located actually in Irving, Texas, which is just a few minutes outside of Dallas. Um, we offer, uh, our university has uh, only about 17 or 1500 undergraduate students. So with that, we have small class sizes. Our average class size is right around 19 students and the student to faculty ratio is about 11 to one. So you really get the opportunity to interact with your peers and your professors in those small class sizes. Uh, we have 30 all honors majors. So what that means is, is when you graduate from the University of Dallas, you will either have to present a thesis or do uh, take a series of comprehensive exams. So when you graduate, you know that you are a master of your major. Um, and we have about 20 concentrations, which are basically minors. So while our majors are fantastic, what UD, one of the things that UD is really known for is our fantastic core curriculum. We have a all Western civilization core curriculum. It's about 19 classes and you take 10 different subjects. And it's really this great opportunity to develop this holistic knowledge of the um, Western, of the liberal arts. And all of our undergraduate students take this core curriculum. So it's one of the things that unifies our community. Um, it is, you take all classes from English, philosophy, history, politics, economics, theology, um, math, science, and lit uh, language arts. So you really get a opportunity to explore a lot of different subjects. And you can either take this core curriculum in your first two years at UD, some students who come in undecided, uh, spend their first two years really focusing on that core curriculum and getting it complete, or you can spread it out over four years if you come into UD knowing exactly what you want to major in. So you really have the opportunity to really play with it and use the core how you really want to. Um, the next pillar that UD is really known for is our study abroad program. So UD has a uh, study abroad program in Rome, Italy. We have an entire campus there. It would be basically like you picked up a small portion of UD and put it in Rome, Italy. Um, our campus is actually located in Duisante, Italy, which is again about 13 miles outside of Rome. And about 85% of our students participate in this program. Typically students go in the fall or spring semester of their sophomore year and the curriculum you take there is entirely core related so what that means is, is you don't have to worry about taking courses that are irrelevant to your major every course you take there is required to graduate from ud and it's a opportunity to really still um get what you wanted when you came to ud so you get this really rigorous uh 
academic program while you're in Rome studying the Western civilization. And students, you know, enjoy frequent outings where they can walk in the footsteps of the greatest Western civilization thinkers. Uh, so it really rounds out the core curriculum, if especially if that's the end of the core curriculum that you're completing at that time. Um, so basically the reason why we chose Rome, Italy for our study abroad program is because we are a Catholic institution. 75% of our students are Catholic. However, UD welcomes all denominations. You do not have to be Catholic to come to UD. Uh, we foster and support academic and religious freedom um, and spiritual development, no matter what your religion is. So with that being said, we have no obligations for students to be Catholic or to um, participate in Catholic uh, um, gatherings such as mass or anything like that. However, for our Catholic students who do want to participate in those activities, we do offer mass twice daily um, and three times on Saturdays. And then we also have uh, confession and adoration daily as well. Um, in regard to student life, UD has a very rich and vibrant community. As I stated before, uh, the core curriculum really unites us, but we're also united under our residency requirement. Most students live on campus until they're 21 years old or senior in stature. Um, so that way they can really unify again as a community. And uh, we also offer right about 50 clubs and organizations. And for a small institution, that's fantastic. You really get the opportunity to participate in anything that you really want to. And UD really encourages our students to go out and meet people and socialize and really participate in those clubs and organizations. We also have 15 uh, NCAA Division III sports. So student, student athletes are, um, a, are is another fat, fantastic way to get involved at UD. A lot of our students don't come to UD with the um, thoughts of playing collegiate sports. They play in high school and they come to UD and then they think, oh yeah, it's exciting. We have these great athletic programs that you can try out for and get to be a part of. Um, so those are just a couple things that are really unique about UD. We do offer, um, uh, we do have fantastic programs and uh, yeah, that's about, that's pretty much the roundabout of UD. You can feel free to ask any questions. Thanks, Katie. And I went ahead and put Katie's email in the chat. So if you've got questions for her specifically, certainly throw those in the Q&A or feel free to shoot her a line. So next, um, I would like to introduce Newman University. Martina. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Martina. I'm going to start sharing here. Well, welcome to Newman University. I, like I said, my name is Martina and I do have an accent because I come from Italy. So if you don't understand something, feel free to ask in the questions. I was a student here at Newman and now I'm an admission counselor. Uh, I graduated with a degree in marketing and management and a minor in entrepreneurship. We are a smaller institution. Uh, we have around 1,200 students, which means we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an 18 average class size. Professors in those conditions are always super available for you. They really you know, want to get to know you as a person. Uh, so they might come to some of your games, or if you are interested in arts, they might come to some of your plays or performances. We are located in Wichita, Kansas, which is ranked one of the top, top, top 10 places to live in the United States, and is also the biggest city in Kansas, but in Kansas by population. We have opportunities to go to many different concerts. We have an arena, but we also have a thousand plus restaurants and 125 plus parks, so a lot of fresh air for you. We are a Catholic institution. Uh, you do not have to be Catholic to come to Newman and you will not be required to go to mass as well. Uh, but if you are Catholic, we have campus ministry and we have daily mass, um, Sunday mass, and we also have adoration and confession. We were established in 1933, founded by the Daughters of the Blood of Christ, which is a group of sisters that came from Italy. And we are named after St. John Henry Newman. We are known for all the things that you see on the screen, but in my opinion, since I was a student, the most important part is the high employment. 71% of our students are employed in their field of study and the national average is 27%. So that means that whatever you put into Newman University, whatever you are, you are basically just, you know, getting ready for your future, getting ready to just invest in it. 
uh, we, these are all our undergraduate programs. If I have to pick the top three uh, that students go into are any of the sciences or uh, business and nursing. Uh, the, we also have pre-professional programs and we have quite a few students that choose pre-law. One of our students uh, last year just, you know, this went to another institution with a full ride after going to Newman. We have state of art science facilities. Uh, we do have a cadaver lab, um, which is actually also used by KU med students on their first year. And our professors teach those classes to the, to the students that go to KU. So the transition between Newman and a med school, it's fairly easy. There's a few misconception connected to Newman. One of them is that we are not affordable. We do have a free application. Um, I might put the link in the chat. Um, it's online, it takes 15 minutes. We do give out general scholarship and 99% of our students receive financial assistance. Another one is that it's hard to get into Newman. Well, we are test optional and we have been test optional since 2019. We do try to recruit for fit. So if we think that you're gonna thrive in our, at our institution, we really want you here. And um, to get into Newman, the requirements are you need to have either a 2.25 GPA or a 21 ACT or higher. Um, Obviously, if you happen to not meet those requirements, we do also have conditional reviews to see if you can be accepted anyway. Um, these are some of the scholarship options. Any student that is a first time student um, that gets accepted will get one of these scholarship. Like I said, we're test optional, but feel free to send your ACTs. If you think they're higher than your GPA, you will get a higher scholarship because we'll try to give you the highest amount we can. Then we have a few special scholarships which have a deadline of December 1st. So it passed for this year, but it's, you know, it will be open for next year. Um, the St. Newman Scholarship is a full tuition. We only give it to five students. You need a 3.9 GPA and a 29 ACT. And then the AC Community Leader Scholarship is 17,500. It will replace your academic scholarship and you need a 3.0 and community service and leadership experience. Um, we also have scholarships that are tied to majors. So if you want to be an art or theater major, you can do a, an audition or a portfolio review and get some extra money. And if you are into music and you want to be in our choir or in our troubadours, you can audition and get $2,000 extra. And we also have an honors scholarship, which is $1,000. And you need a 3.7 GPA and a 25 ACT, but temporarily they have been test optional. So we'll see what happens next year. Um, these are kind of like a deadline, uh, like a timeline for you. Uh, the deadline for the special scholarship is December 1st. And then we recommend applying for FAFSA as soon as it opens on October 1st. We are the only private in NCAA divisions um, to university in Kansas. And we have 18 teams within men and women, but if you're interested in intramurals, we do have those. What does it mean that we are division two? Well, we can give out also athletic scholarships. So if you're an athlete, come on over. <laughs> uh, living on campus, it is an option. It is, it is required until you're a sophomore, unless you leave 30 miles, you know, in a 30 miles radius from Newman and you can waive that requirement. Uh, all our first time students will live in Karochi, which is sweet style. So you share a room with another person and you share a bathroom with two other people. There's laundry, internet and printers. All students and human get 150 pages for free every month, every week. And Navigator is this new program that basically will have you give you a mentor. So you will be able to um, get jobs opportunities, internship opportunities. And if you're a first generation college student like me, um, we have another program in which you will have a mentor that will help you navigate through college. And together we saw is our slogan for COVID. All our students are meeting in class in person. They have to social distance. They have to wear a mask outside and inside the classrooms. And if you do test positive, we also have a a dorm that we solely use for um, quarantining and you will get food uh, for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So if you think that Newman could be your, you know, your option, this is our social media, feel free to reach out to us there and see all the scholarship and opportunities that we have to offer. Thanks, Martina. Absolutely. <laughs> Next, we have the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining today. My name is Juliet 
and I will be telling you a little bit about Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, also known as REMCAD. We are the premier art and design college located in the Mountain West region, Colorado, just west of downtown Denver on a beautiful historic campus, which is rich with history. Our small size student body was established in 1963. And right now we're about 1500 students and we were founded on something more than academic excellence. Creative minds take root here for the relentless student support, innovation, and both teaching and mentoring and operational excellence. Students come to REMCAD for an education, but they stay for the creative community. So much so that REMCAD Renew program is a return on the original investment for you to continue upgrading your skill sets in your uh, degree program after you graduate for free. That's right, I said it for free. So from the list here, you could read, we are a multidisciplinary education. These programs will lead to a variety of different creative careers, all designed to teach the skills of storytelling, artistic, technical skills, voice, and vision. Incoming students choose a discipline and may specify an emphasis in certain programs. For instance, in illustration, students can emphasize becoming a concept designer or a storybook illustrator, or perhaps wanting to become a sequential artist. We will nurture all of these passions. The professional practices taught here are going to prepare our graduates to enter the workforce jobs and niche industries with solid portfolios. If you're someone who thinks you might be interested in this type of education, go ahead and capture this QR code. And if you would like to fast track to uh, applying online, you could go to remcad.edu. Currently, we are not um, taking any fees with the application, so you can use that as your placeholder. You could apply online before you even submit your portfolio. Because at REMCAD, we require a portfolio for admissions filled with your own original artwork. Your admissions counselor will set you up for success during what we call an admissions interview. REMCAD recognizes that all ampl applicants are in the student learning stage of their career, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. Within a year when you plan to attend, that admissions interview will be conducted with your parent or guardian where we tell you all about the different programs. This is when you can meet your program chair, introduce you to some of the other important people who will be playing a role in your application process. No standardized tests are uh, needed and when you get to the financial aid process we have a fantastic team who will walk you through your options. So you might be asking the question why REMCAD? Why, why can't I learn what I need to learn online or through to YouTube tutorials? And the answer is this, 84% of the creative careers obtained are obtained through networking. And so then you might be asking yourself, then why REMCAD? Small class sizes, hands-on instruction and strong foundational classes are some of the reasons why. We also have a unique degree sequence that's designed for artists in mind, where our students only take two classes per eight weeks, still giving them the four classes in the semester. But ultimately, it relieves stress from being required to do too much homework and projects in other areas of study. I did want to uh, take note of our mental health services. We are in a mental health crisis right now, so I want to let you guys know that we are supporting our students in that way. We also have other distinctions like we appreciate originality and weird, right? So the word weird stands for wonderful, exciting, interesting, real, and different. So stay weird. In addition, our educators are real artists, designers, and liberal arts professionals who have lived and worked in their industries. Artists are lifelong learners and make some of the best teachers. A number of the courses spread across the humanities and liberal arts will help with the breadth and depth of critical thinking, the knowledge of the world around you, and that will all in intersect with your creative work. Chris Asso Apache is one of our liberal arts instructors, and here you see that his, one of his poems was selected by Oprah just this past October. Furthermore, other alumni, alumni success is with Google, Adobe, Paul Tranny here is quoted on how important it was to have been taught by real artists um, and experts working in the field and the importance of a portfolio. Paul Tranny is, an, a talented, is a talented graphic designer working for Adobe software programs in California. So he is a different type of teacher enriching the artists and design community with learning how to work with software. Some of you might be saying this quote, 
but I will say I wanted to point out it was a crazy year and some fires were lit still ashes are burning and artists and designers were metaphorically on the front lines communicating all of the new changes that had to be done and so we're making a powerful impact in our world. We're also helping with the environment because there's a lot of repurposing of materials that goes into an artist's mind and practice. Now, when not repurposing materials and actually needing equipment, resources on campus help our students develop the skills they need in carpentry, 3D printing. We have um, visiting artists and scholars, designers who come in and do artist lectures in order to share their professional stories. And all of this is going to help the students network in their industries and with their peers of like-minded individuals, all creative individuals at REMCAD. So we stand together united in creativity and expression to succeed no matter what obstacles we face. That's something that Brent Fitch said the other day, and I wanted to point that out. And if an obstacle is financial, I wanted to point out we are a third of the cost of other NASAD accredited educations. NASAD stands for the National, National Association of Schools of Art and Design. And if you are interested in applying, just keep practicing. Drawing hands are, are hard, but you can always connect with me, ask me what I think. My email is listed down there. Please take a picture of this screen and I will send a link in the chat. And I wanted to thank you so much for your attention. Good luck with all your endeavors. Thanks, Juliet. Appreciate it. Next, we have Westminster College. Hi guys, just give me a second to share my screen. All right. So uh, my name is Lane Hume. I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for Westminster College in Missouri. Um, we are a small private liberal arts school right in the heart of the state. Um, so this is just a picture of kind of the heart of campus. Um, and one thing that we're really well known for is the amount of history that we have. So I always like to start here. So what you're looking at is um, a Christopher Wren church actually. So it is, um, you know, a 15th century building. It is a, a beautiful piece of architecture that was originally in the heart of London. It was bombed in World War II and it was gifted to us in recognition of Winston Churchill having given the Iron Curtain speech on campus back in 1942. Um, 1946, excuse me. Um, and next to it is the largest piece of the Berlin Wall in all of North America. So uh, a fun fact that I'll share here is that, you know, Winston Churchill's granddaughter is actually a pretty well-known artist and she was a sculptor. So when the Berlin Wall came down, again, kind of in recognition of Churchill, um, she did these really cool sculptures with it and she gifted us um, the largest one that she did. So we get lots of tourism on campus, which adds a really unique flair. Um, in the basement of that church, there's a multi-million dollar museum. Um, so our students can get a, a chance to have firsthand experience with curational studies, um, all kinds of historical studies um, that's really unique to our campus. So we'll go right on into kind of just the fast facts about West, what, what, what Westminster has to offer. So we have a 98% success rate. So that means 98% of our students are working in their field or in graduate school within six months of graduation. Um, so Westminster does a really good job of putting our students out there in the real world. Um, we're also really, really successful. Um, we're in the top bracket of schools that have students who are making the most money after graduating as well. We have an 11 to one student teacher ratio. Our classroom experience is really small and intimate. Um, it's very much based around having a relationship with your professor, um, being able to ask questions, roundtable discussions, those types of settings. There are no large lecture halls at Westminster, nothing like that. So it's in a very engaging experience at all times. We do something called the Hancock Symposium where we have notable speakers that come in from all over the world. We cancel classes for full, two full days in September just to kind of give you an idea of what that experience is like. Um, our keynote speaker the year before last was Madeleine Albright, the first female secretary of state in the United States. And then our keynote speaker this year was the chief scientist of NASA. So the thing that's different at Westminster though, is that when you are on campus with these really important people in our communities, you get to actually be face to face with them. You're not in an institution where you're competing with 15,000 students to try to be able to sit in a gigantic auditorium and hear them, you can actually interview them for the newspaper, you can have lunch with them, we have welcoming committees, all those types of things. Um, so it's a really unique experience. 
We do an undergraduate scholars forum. So that's an entire day where we don't have classes again, where we celebrate our students doing undergraduate research because we are just an undergraduate institution. All our research resources are specifically for the undergraduate experience. So you're never competing for those opportunities with graduate students. We are located in Fulton, Missouri, which is a smaller town, um, but it was actually picked as one of the Smithsonian's top 15 best small towns of 2019. So it's really quirky. They do all kinds of festivals all, all year long, um, and it really has a lot of life in it. Um, and we're also in a town with another university. So it's really a nice kind of college town if you're looking for that comfortable college feel on a little bit more of a smaller scale instead of a larger city. So these are our top programs. By no means are these all of our programs. We're very well known for pre-med track sciences. Uh, we offer a cadaver lab, um, but it's specifically just our campus. Our cadaver lab is not for any other graduate students, no medical students. So our students get to do the full human anatomy dissection themselves. There's only six people in that dissection lab at a time under the guidance of a professor. So you're literally doing the dissection, um, which most students don't get to do until medical school. Um, we're very well known for our pre-law minor um, that sends many students on to law school. We've sent students to Harvard, um, many to Vanderbilt Law, very competitive programs. One really unique thing that we do as well is what's called a self-design major. So because we're a smaller school, our students can actually work with their faculty advisor to create their own major or minor. So about 15% of our students end up doing this either in the major form or the uh, minor form. Um, but that's a really cool thing to do if you're wanting to really explore different areas, combine some unique areas um, and explore different paths. We do offer an honors program, and then we're also nationally recognized for our learning differences program. So if students have a learning difference, um, we also specialize in students on the autism spectrum, dyslexia, dysgraphia. Um, we really, really do a great job of helping students transition to college life um, with those types of backgrounds. Quickly, just to talk a little bit about student life. Our housing is really cool at Westminster. We do suite style freshman living. We have townhomes and apartments and houses for upperclassmen. Study abroad is very popular at Westminster. We have lots of sister schools all around the world. One really cool club and organization that I like to talk about is our Blue Blazers Investment Club. So we actually have a stock portfolio that's valued over a million dollars now that's entirely run by our students. They go up to New York every two years, open the stock exchange, and really get to kind of see a hands-on experience of how all of that works. We are an NCAA Division III school, so we do have athletics. About half of our students play a sport and about half of our students are also in Greek life. So we have three sororities and six fraternities. That means our students are very involved. Most of our students are in five to six different activities. So it's a really great way to have to, to be able to get an experience to do everything you want and not have to sacrifice a certain aspect during your college experience. So quickly, just to talk about visiting and applying, you can Lane, thank you so much. I'm sorry, your time is up. And I know we've got two other schools that we need to get in here. So um, I'm sure you will drop some things in the chat for the students. And at this point, I'd like to introduce the University of Missouri, Kansas City. All right, hello, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen really quickly. Perfect. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And before I get into this, I just want to say welcome to Kansas City. So I'm Jordan Davis, and I am the Kansas Admissions Counselor for UMKC, the University of Missouri in Kansas City. We are Kansas City's largest comprehensive four-year university. And as such, Kansas City, a, a sprawling metropolitan area of over 2 million people, gets to be your campus. But we do have a campus proper, so let's talk about that a little bit. So here are a few interesting tidbits. Um, <clears throat> between our two campuses, our Volcker campus, which you can see pictured in the background in my background here, and our Health Sciences District campus, we have just over 16,000 students, meaning that we're classified as a mid-size institution. Um, we have the resources and the um, renowned faculty of a much larger institution, but you have the ability to connect with those faculty that you might see at a much smaller institution. 
We have over 125 majors at UMKC. These range from majors in our robust College of Arts and Sciences that include everything from studio art to sociology to criminal justice and criminology and English to our renowned conservatory of music, dance, and theater, which houses all of our music performance, music composition, music theory, as well as our dance and theater programs, to our really unique six-year BAMD program, where students have the opportunity to pursue both a bachelor's of Arts degree and a Doctorate of Medicine degree in a six-year time frame as opposed to the traditional eight-year time frame. So you can see there's a little something for everybody at UMKC. Our student to faculty ratio is about 15 to 1 and we have over 300 student organizations ranging from Greek life and pre-professional organizations to just interest organizations and we're always encouraging students to start their own organizations based off of their interests as well. And lastly, we have over 14 Division I um, athletic teams. So a little bit about our community. One thing about UMKC is that we like to promote diversity in a variety of ways. So our campus has over 40% students of color. We have 85 countries from around the globe represented. We have multiple LGBTQIA scholarships and services, in addition to scholarship services and offices for student veterans, first generation college students, and various other <clears throat> ways that you might identify or um, people that you might support who identify a given way. We also have over 1,200 students living on campus in a vibrant on-campus community that's spread between two residence halls and one apartment complex. And we also have an honors program for students who are interested in a more challenging, a more rigorous undergraduate experience. So what do we look for in an application at UMKC? Well, in this box, you'll see our freshman admission criteria. We look at your high school core curriculum, ACT or SAT score, though I will point you to this box, because most of our programs are now test optional, so long as you have a 2.75 core GPA. We look at your GPA and we look at your class rank. Now these are all flexible. We do holistic admissions. And so if you're deficient in one category, it's definitely not an end all be all thing. These are also the things you'll actually need to apply. So the application, we accept the online application through us as well as the common app. We have a $45 application fee, but that is waivable if you have financial need, and then your high school transcripts and test scores if you choose to send those to us. So this is something I love to talk about because I'm from Topeka, Kansas, and I went to UMKC and got my bachelor's degree there a few years ago. And this was one of the reasons I chose UMKC because at UMKC, we really strive to provide an affordable education to students from a variety of areas. So you can see here that on the border of Kansas and Missouri, even though we're in Kansas City, Missouri, UMKC provides students from the entire state of Kansas in-state tuition, meaning you're gonna be paying the same rate as a Missouri resident would, which is a fantastic opportunity to come study in this big city, but not pay extra to do so. Additionally, we have this really cool intermittent tuition rate between our out-of-state rate and our in-state rate called the Heartland rate for all of these states in the blue. So that includes Nebraska and Oklahoma. And this is a significantly discounted, $10,000 significantly discounted rate from our out-of-state rate. So students from these areas can come to Kansas City to study with our renowned faculty in our great programs in this amazing city as well. So that's really a cool um, unique tuition set structure that UMKC has. Again, like I mentioned, we have two residence halls. You can see those pictured here. They're both suite style, both constructed within the last 15 years. So you're not gonna be living in any, you know, cinder block walls from the eighties, um, but it's a fantastic place. And students who live on campus do tend to do better in their classes. Um, so we encourage students to consider it. We also have an apartment complex on our health sciences district campus. And that is, you can see a little glimpse of that here. Here are some of the visit options that we have. We have a variety of options based upon your availability, your comfortability, um, both in person and virtual. We have academic info sessions, Discover UMKC weeks, um, all kinds of live chats and things like that. So if you have any questions, I can definitely um, connect with you. I'll put my contact in the group chat um, after this presentation. And then lastly, I just wanna put this um, up to contact us. Again, I'll put my own contact information up, but 
This is the admissions email. It goes to all the admissions counselors. And this is our telephone number. And this is how you can apply. And lastly, I'll just leave you by saying this is a glimpse of our health sciences district campus near downtown Kansas City. So thank you so much for coming and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, Jordan. And last but not least, we have the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Hi, everybody. My name is Marcus Manley. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, because of time, you're going to see me go through a lot of information very quickly. So I will also include, um, in general, our email address right here, right now. That way, if you want to send us an email, you can do so and get any additional information. Maybe it's not sending. There we go. Um, but I do want to hop right into the information. Here at UNO, the one thing we like to tell our students is that you're going to have access to anything and everything that you're going to need to get your degree as fast as possible. Um, and that is in all aspects, learning, living, and location. The first, sorry, my computer stopped working. Can everyone still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you, Marcus. Okay, my screen froze, so sorry. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. I do want to go over some general information here real quick while I can. We do have about 12,000 undergraduate students earning their bachelor's degree at a time. Um, so we are also considered a mid-sized institution. In total, we have about 15,000 students. Um, the nice part is that we are located in Omaha, Nebraska, which is actually the third fastest growing city here within the US. Um, we serve about 6,000 first generation students. With that being said, that means that we know our students are all going to come back, come from a very variety, a large variety of um, different backgrounds that they haven't experienced college. They sometimes need more assistance. And that's why we really harp on being here to assist students. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is your access to academics. We do have 200 plus majors and programs among six different colleges. Our top five majors and programs being um, College of Business Administration, Education, Psychology, Criminal Justice, Criminology, and then Social Work. We also have top, um, we have three top five um, in the nation programs, that being Aviation, um, Bioinformatics, and, um, oh God, what was the last one? <laughs> Bioinformatics, Aviation, um, and I'll come back to that third one. I can't remember it at the moment. Um, we have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so we do want to make sure that our students get access to their professors, that they're not just a number in a classroom. Um, the largest class size I ever had while attending was probably only about 30 people and the smallest being three. So you will have a variety of different class sizes, so you get access to a lot um, to your professors quite often. While you are a student and you are studying, we want to make sure that you also know that you have access to be a, a person. Um, we do have 200 plus registered clubs and organizations. That number is now at 285 this year, um, as well as students get access to free admission to anything that's happening on campus, that being concerts. We had Black Bear. They were planned to come on campus this last year um, until COVID hit, and then any games art ex exhibits, any um, speakers coming. Barack Obama came in 2016. And so we do like to make sure that students have access to the people that they want to see. Um, in addition to that, we do have 15 division one athletic teams, that being nine women's sports and six men's sports. And then we like to really tell students about life is beyond the classroom. While you are studying, you're getting your degree, we wanna make sure that they're well prepared for the world thereafter. And so we have students who study abroad in over 112 different countries. Um, all of those being accredited universities, your, your, your credits are always gonna transfer back as soon as you come back here to the United States. Um, in addition to that, we call Omaha our campus. While we do have a campus here um, in Omaha, um, we call the entire city our campus because students are getting access to businesses, internships, um, educational opportunities, all off campus every single day, every single hour. 88% um, of our students are doing internships starting their sophomore year. And it's a very high number for a reason. It's because you do want that type of experience and you do want that type of education. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're provided that. 
I also like to talk about housing just real quickly, mainly because you have a private room. We do not require any of our students to live on campus. So if you're not from Nebraska and you wanna come here, we do have housing available. You get your own room, which is an awesome opportunity. So you get privacy, you get study space, you get to not have to worry about how loud your roommate is gonna be while you're sleeping. Um, and then you also get to share a living space with three other people. So while you do have that type of privacy, you're never alone, which is the nice part. We have laundry facilities that are free for students to use as well as um, a wide variety of meal options and events happening on campus. Um, I'm gonna really quickly go through affordability and scholarships, um, mainly because they changed very recently. Here we have mapped out um, what our cost of attendance, our estimated cost of attendance is. For Nebraska residents, this is an estimate mainly because nobody has to live on campus if they do not wish to. So if you decide that you want to live on campus, that bottom number, that 18,000 for Nebraska students, that's about that cost you're going to see. For out-of-state students, it's gonna be a 31, but keep in mind that both of those numbers, um, it includes both the meal plan, housing, book supplies, all of that estimates. Um, I'm gonna go through scholarships. I'm not, I'm gonna provide a link for scholarships, but real quick, I wanna jump to the end. Um, mainly because I want you to see our requirements really quickly, our course requirements. Um, we are also test optional. So when you apply, you don't need the ACT or SAT. And then here is our contact information. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we have a few minutes left. And so what I want to do is have all of our panelists uh, come back on screen and I'm gonna have them go round robin. And unfortunately it looks like we've lost Katie. Um, but if you could all tell our participants, oh, she's coming back. Excellent, Katie, I got nervous. I'm glad you're back. Um, if you could all go around and share one fun fact about your institution. So Katie, you are up first. Awesome, yeah, sorry about that. Um, that wasn't actually a technical difficulty except for my own because I actually hit my headphones and turned it off. Um, uh, one fun fact about the University of Dallas. So uh, one cool thing about UD is that we actually have the second largest Groundhog Day celebration in the nation next to Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Um, it's basically like a, what I would kind of compare it to is a division one homecoming. Um, if you can just imagine all of the activities that happen there, that's kind of what UD does for uh, Groundhog Day. Martina, how about it, Newman? It's always hard trying to find one fan fact, especially when you went to that school and there's so many, but I feel like um, I have to talk about Jet Fridays. This is like something that we do every Friday of the you know school year. Um, it's donuts, free donuts for any students. They go to the student center. Um, they guess you know they wear something Newman. You don't have to wear a t-shirt. You can use your lanyard. I did that a lot of times. And <laughs> you just grab a donut. You can hang out in the student center and talk to any faculty, staff, other students. Or, you know, or just if you were like, if you're like me and you always had class in the morning, uh, you would just go grab the donut, grab a coffee and go back to class. <laughs> Outstanding. Juliet. So the Remcad campus in Denver, Colorado was, um, is on an old tuberculosis hospital. So um, we have some haunted, there's actually, um, you know, path below the cement where they help transport the patients from building to building during inclement weather. And so we have haunted house tours that happen under there. And then during their seminar uh, methods of inquiry class, the incoming, they're all freshmen that are in this class and they all build these repurposed sculptures and materials and they hide them all over the building. And so you'll just be walking and there'll be like a crazy plastic constructed spider up in the corner there that scares you that wasn't there the day before and um, kind of fun that they can't, the students could take over if you will. <laughs> Love it, Lane. Uh, I think one of the most unique facts about Westminster is that if you look at like your history textbooks, um, the Cold War essentially started and ended at Westminster. So the Cold War was officially tagged as starting with Winston Churchill's Iron Curtain speech and then Gorbachev actually gave the speech that ended the Cold War at Westminster as well. So that's pretty interesting that we can say that we were at the beginning and the end of, you know, the most 
um, you know, influential wars of the past century. UMKC, Jordan. So I would say in terms of like recent developments, one cool thing is that our health sciences district, which houses our schools of medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, and nursing and health studies is one of only 18 areas in the country that houses these four um, schools alongside a children's hospital and an adult acute care hospital. And it's one of the only areas in the country that also has a health department, medical examiner, and mental health center all on that one campus. Are you also the only school with kangaroos as a mascot? Perhaps. <laughs> and Marcus, wrap us up. Um, fun fact about UNO, the first two weeks are probably the most fun I've ever had, both as an employee and as a student. We do have a thing called Durango Days. And it, the first two weeks, I'm not kidding, it's just jam-packed full of events, free food, free swag like this, um, and just getting to meet a ton of new people. So those first two weeks, those Durango days, it's a blast. Like you saw in the picture, the, the paint rave, that always happens during Durango days. So that's always a fun time. And that is a great piece of advice. No matter where you go to school, there will be free food. If they want you to participate, there will be free food. So on that note, I'm gonna share my screen really quick. And just again, thank you for joining us today. Um, there will be a quick survey. So if you participated today, you'll get four questions to answer. Please go ahead and do that um, just so that we can continue to improve these programs for future students. There is one more block of sessions that starts at four o'clock. So if you want to learn about some more schools, join us. And again, the recording will be available at the same website that you signed up for. And again, join us in April. We'll have another great crew of schools to learn about and best of luck with your college search. Thanks guys for joining us.